Hi, I'm Jim McCarran, Mayor of the City of Tonitown. It's a pleasure to be with you today, and thank you for taking time to watch this video. This is the mid-issue report uh, that I traditionally give between the issues of the Tonitown record, and it's going to be a little different this time in that I'm going to talk about something particular rather than just general comments. I'm sure all of you are aware of the controversy that has uh, been before City Council for the last year or so regarding water and sewer rates. I want to take time to address this, partly because of a letter to the editor that was sent by a councilman's wife, and partly because of a effort to have a petition signed uh, that was perhaps misleading in intent. Over the last year or so, your city council has spent a great deal of time examining the water and sewer rates for our town and the efficiency of operating our water and sewer system. A councilman who was just elected last May and had no background in operating a water and sewer fertility has led the charge to lower the water and sewer rates, claiming that the rates are too high. The only basis for this charge is that he feels we, the citizens, are paying too much. Reason the people realize that we have to pay for the services provided. This, of course, is true for our schools, our roads, our police protection, trash pickup, yes, even for our water and sewer system. While we might disagree on what we think is fair and reasonable fee for these services, I think we all can agree that nothing in life is free. And for the next few minutes, I hope to be able to share with you my thoughts as to why I feel that we are being fair with our water and sewer charges and point out some obvious omissions and downright misinformation being spread by some in town regarding these charges. First of all, some background. In 2010, your city council, in an effort to try to overcome a significant deficit in the water and sewer utility, which caused the city to have to dip deeply into its reserve funds and to borrow general fund property tax dollars to help pay for the water and sewer operations. The separations of these two enterprises is a requirement imposed on us by our auditors and bondholders, those folks who pay for the projects that we have completed. We formed a committee to study this issue. The committee was formed by, from members of the council, the city staff, and from interested citizens. The goal was to examine what level of funding would be needed to fully fund the water and sewer operations so we would not have to use savings or property tax revenue to make up the shortfall. The committee soon realized that it lacked the expertise to make meaningful recommendations without the aid of professional assistance. We elected to hire a group that specializes in this type of study, and the recommendation was a significant increase in water and sewer rates. And after much consideration, the council elected to accept these results of the study, known as the Davenport Report, but to phase in the rate increases over a period of time, rather than impose a one-time charge uh, and, and which should result in a large increase. Consequently, since the fiscal year 2011 budget, scheduled increases have occurred in order to move us toward this goal of self-sustaining water and sewer department. I mentioned the councilman was elected in May and he campaigned on the issue of reducing water and sewer rates. He came, and after he was elected, he brought the idea to the council to reduce these rates. It was explained that a certain level of funding was necessary to operate our water and sewer system 
And he was presented with background documents, including the Davenport report that I mentioned a minute ago. This brought him up to date to where the rest of the council members were. Further, in an offer to make sure nothing was overlooked from the initial study, I formed a new committee to take a fresh look at ways that we may be able to operate more efficiently and perhaps reduce rates. The councilman was part of this committee. It was led by Mayor Pro Tem Diane Foster and concerned citizens. The committee met for three months and completed their work in September. They brought their recommendations to the council and the majority of which were adopted and are now in effect. The committee did not recommend to reduce rates. Satisfied with the previous study was accurate and on track. Still the councilman ignoring the conclusions of the committee of which he was a part continues to breach the subject of lower rates with no suggestion of how indeed the funds should be replaced if indeed these rates were lowered. There are many other reasons as to why we pay the rates we do and why I feel that they're necessary and justified. Let's take a brief history of, of what has occurred over the last 10 or 15 years. There are many projects that were required of your city by the Maryland Department of the Environment that have led to these costs. The first was a project that we began back in 2000 and around the year 2000 when we replaced our wastewater treatment plant. Again, a requirement from the Mar Maryland Department of the Environment. This plant was, re was replacing a plant that went back as early as 1954, created a significant debt, lo debt load. Then I'm sure most of you will recall the time we spent we're doing our downtown and our main streets. Our streetscape project allowed us to uh, address many issues that were affecting our crumbling infrastructure. The water lines on Frederick and York Street were replaced during this times. Linings were in installed in our sewer lines along Baltimore Street. The complete sewer lines were replaced on Mill Avenue. York Street pumping station was replaced, again, dating back to 1954. The upgrades required by MDA to the, to the wastewater treatment plant, which we have just recently completed, will go a long way in protecting our bay and provide state-of-the-art technology to our wastewater treatment plant that other jurisdictions will be catching up with in the near future. All of this created debt. None of these were for our choosing, but yet something we were required to do. And for the first time ever since the implementation of the Davenport Report back in 2011, we've been able to fund our water and sewer operations from the revenue generated by the system's users. We've been able to move salaries that were previously held in the general fund into the water and sewer budget. We've been able to finally comply with the recommendations of our auditors and our bondholders to have this fund a self-sustaining fund. This is accordance with general accepted accounting principles. Some other facts to consider are that since 2008, we've experienced little growth in the way of new homes or businesses because of the recession. Costs of our normal day-to-day -day operations have continued to rise, and I'm sure you can relate this to your household budget. It's our responsibility to meet debt service obligations for expenses created by the wastewater system. The obligations must be paid for by the funds generated by the services rendered. We are restricted from using taxes and other funds not related to the wastewater treatment plant 
to supplement this operation, as I've mentioned previously, and the funds withdrawn from savings to subsidize these shortfalls will soon be depleted. But the good news is the prospect for future growth is encouraging through new housing developments are ready to begin or are underway. But why is this important? Growth helps spread fixed cost of operating a water and sewer system over more households and thus reducing the individual household's costs. Further rate increases may be mitigated if growth continues as projected. The problem is we cannot spend this money until we actually have it. I conducted a survey on my own uh, just a, a week or so ago of all the jurisdictions that provide water and sewer services here in the county. And what I found is that most jurisdictions, in fact, all the jurisdictions except for us, have a, tier, a tiered structure system charging progressively more for the amount of water you use as your water usage increases. Our rate is the only one that simply has a charge that's based on a certain number per thousand gallons. Most also have a fixed fee that everyone pays regardless of the amount of water that they use. This fee is charged quarterly for both water and sewer. We eliminated our fixed fee with the 2011 budget at the request of, of at many citizens' requests. All jurisdictions have a higher sewer rate than a water rate. And we do not have the highest rates. Given the current of rate and of efficiency of our wastewater treatment plant and its new bay-friendly improvements, the rates that we charge are justified. Other jurisdictions will be placed with the same mandate for upgrades that we've experienced and will raise their rates and as a consequence. This is evident in recent articles in the Carroll County Times about the pending county water and sewer rate increases and conversations with my fellow mayors who are faced with increases in their wastewater treatment plant costs for this coming fiscal year. Rest assured, we will continue to be diligent in our evaluation of the overall operations of our water and sewer enterprise. We will continue to explore efficiencies to be gained and employ the best management practices. Our future holds much promise as we emerge from the worst recession since the Great Depression. We continue to consider our citizens first and all the while ensuring a safe and viable water supply and a bay-friendly treatment facility. Thanks for taking time to listen and thank you for your understanding and support. I'd like to conclude my remarks with an email that I received from a young lady last week concerning the petition that I meant at the, mentioned at the beginning of my talks. Mr. Mayor, on election day, I was approached outside the Northwest Middle School by a lady asking me to sign a petition. I'm a 19 year old and this was my first election and I got caught up in the words she spoke instead of researching the issue myself. I signed the petition. After further investigation and personal research, I found a her approach to have been disingenuous to say the least. The petition was not indeed about lowering taxes or water bills. As a receipt of this email, please remove my name from the information on the petition. The approach of preying on unknowing voters is wrong. And I ask anyone else who feels the same way to contact our city office and request their name to be removed from the petition if you felt that it's been mis misrepresented. The, the address is scrolling across your screen right now, or you can just simply dial into the city hall. Thank you for listening.